you know, yes, there we go. We'll show the rear cover just for a change. We'll view outside. It is sunny and daylight here. Hi, and welcome. Who's here? A lot of jazz. I've seen you before. Nice to have you back. Um, hang on, I'm gonna put this down. I'll be right back. <laughs> My props. Okay. Hi, thanks for joining me. Nice to have you back. Hi, Melissa. Thank you for joining me, and thanks for coming in. I'm gonna lead into the subject gently because people can probably be joining as we go. As I know, there's folks in the UK coming in now, and that's uh, what 8:30 their time, and this is LA, which is 12:30. Pacific time. Thanks for joining me. My name is Barry Selby. This shot's kind of bright. I'm going to change shirts for my later ones. It's almost blinding. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. I am known as the love doctor to my friends and clients. Um, it's funny, I'm actually on a telesummit that's airing today. I just heard myself introduced and it was kind of like, I am. That's kind of nice. For my clients, I'm the heartbreak repair specialist. And I'll get into what I mean about that in this topic because it's going to be juicy. That's kind of my theme this week is juicy topics. So if you want to know more about me, you can go to my website. And just to make it easy, everything about me on social media and on my website is my name. So barryselby.com is where you find me. Periscope.tv slash Barry Selby. Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc., etc. Just to make it easy. But my passion, my mission, my calling is healthy relationships on the planet. And Periscope's an avenue I get to share and hopefully help you get what you want. So since you're here and you're watching, if you do me a favor, if you're alive or on the replay, please tap the screen to give hearts. And if you're live, please share it with your friends, your followers, and Twitter, etc., etc. Because um, I have something I want to tell you about that leans into a new topic I haven't covered before. Thank you for the hearts. And I'm going to be talking, also reflecting on previous to uh, two scopes I did yesterday and the day before because they're still pretty very um, present. So so there. So if you're not following me already on um, Periscope, just swipe right on the iPhone, swipe down, swipe down, I think it's on the Droid, and just tap follow so you'll be able to catch my stuff. Thank you, lover of jazz. I appreciate you sharing on Twitter. And thanks for the hearts as well. Much appreciated. Um, I have a goal. I'm actually doing four, four Periscopes today. This is my second one. I've got two more to go. Um, I'm on two um, past the cast type share -athons. I'm doing my regular two scopes every day, which is Love Scope, which is this one, and my Perry Tips later on. So. I'm busy on Periscope today, and uh, lots to share and lots of good stuff to help you with. So thanks for joining me, thanks for following, thanks for watching, um, sharing on Facebook, share, sorry, sharing on Twitter and Facebook, you can do that now, and on Twitter, and on your followers, on your followers, with your followers. Okay, enough people have joined in, let's get started. As you notice, I was waffling to pad out the time. So, contortionary, it's not an effective skill in relationships, and I don't mean it sexually, that's a whole nother topic, I'm not covering that here. So in case you came in to watch me talk about that, you missed it. That's not going to be this one. This is about emotional and mental and um, behavioral contortionary. Thank you for the heart. So please keep tapping the screen if I agree. And if you have questions or thoughts about this, either agreement or you don't agree or you have some questions, please put them in the comments because I do want, want to make this interactive. This is not about me, although it's coming from me. It's about how your life can be improved. And if there's questions that make your relationships better or your single life better, Please ask them and I'll get to them as I go. All right, so thank you for being here. First, um, the reason this topic came up is because I have been aware both on the news media, which I do occasionally catch, I don't really want to, but I do, and also with some conversations with friends where they are adjusting themselves out of who they are to please their partner. And that's really the bottom line of where I'm gonna start from and I'm gonna build from there. So please stay tuned if this affects you or not, this may be relevant to your love life. <laughs> And again, you can let me know by hearts or by comments if this fits for you or doesn't fit for you or whatever that is. What I've noticed is some people choose to stay in the relationship because it feels more comfortable than being out of the relationship. So because there is a bias towards feeling in the relationship is a safer place to be or more comfortable place to be than being single and alone, they, people are doing things. It's not all my clients doing this, but some people are doing this. They will do things or act like things or suppress things in themselves to fit into this box that is really not their box. So there might be a triangle shape trying to fit in a square plug. It doesn't work, as you can tell. I mean, it's a baby game or a kid's game. But we do that as adults. And so what we do is we, we were trying to... Um, well, let me just put it back up in context. When we first fall in love, oh, how sweet it is, how wonderful it feels, and how 
connected, we feel, to a partner. In my work, my work is to help my clients start from the beginning. Hi, Georgie, nice to have you back again. But what happens in relationships over time, if you don't have clear vision at the beginning and a clear agreement and clear connection where you know each other really well and you build the friendship first, there's a lot of caveats, I know. But a lot of us jump into relationship because we meet them online. Um, I'm actually going to do a post about a new app out there by Oscar Meyer, which is an American meat producer have got a new dating app called Sizzle without a knee. It's a dating app for bacon lovers. How extreme can you get? But in terms of smartphone apps and swiping apps, we meet somebody get in a relationship with very little data. We don't really know who they are ultimately and what they're about, but we fall in love with them because they seem perfect or cool or with most of the things that we want, but not everything. As time goes by, one of the things that happens, not the only thing, but one of the things that happens is we find ourselves in, in this relationship feeling like the relationship shifted from what we wanted, but it's not far enough away from who we are so we can adjust and, 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 and change how we are in the relationship to stay there. This is, well, let me leave you an analogy, and this is not going to be fun, so please bear with me. But if you know how, um, well, some ways, they, they, there's a story about how they um, cook crabs and, and lobsters is they start with the water cold and then they bring it to a boil. By the time it's too hot, they can't get out and they die. That's a painful analogy. But emotionally, that's what happens to people in relationships when they don't catch the warning signs. They stay beyond their place of comfort because they can adjust and adjust and adjust. And it's all like incremental, millimeter by millimeter, changing who they are to please their partner who's gone off the track of where they wanted to go. Now, that's the subtle way. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate that. Thanks for, and any comments, please add, jump in too. And again, please share with your followers and your uh, put on Twitter and Facebook as well. I appreciate you sharing this and marketing it because this stuff, I hope, is touching more lives. It may not happen to you, but it might apply to people you know. So the more you share it, the more they can hopefully get value from this. So let me just reiterate that in another way first, and I'll get two solutions. So there's going to be good in this. Bear with me. As I said, there are um, ways of being in a relationship that can basically take you out of who you are and you end up contorting yourself, like contortionary, where you choose not to react where you normally react or respond how you normally respond to appease your partner. For example, yeah, this one's a, I've got to say this one. I have a friend um, who's still in a relationship that's become abusive physically and emotionally. It didn't start that way, and it wasn't for months. In fact, I think for the first eight months or so, it wasn't abusive. But as time got by, she ended up being on the receiving end emotionally of some pretty nasty stuff, as in emotional abuse and ultimately physical abuse. And I've counseled her unofficially. Hello, good to have you back again. I counseled her a couple of times as a friend, saying, you need to get out for your own sanity, your own health, and your own well-being. But she had been in the, the water when it's cold and it's started to boil and she doesn't know how to get out. This is what I mean about the analogy. It's very painful. And, I, and, I, and it's painful for me to watch because I wish I could help them if they only choose into being helped. So if this happens to you, I'll give you some keys in a minute, but I want you to just see if this resonates for you. So let me know if it does by, in the comments. If you're in relationships where what started out one way ended up somewhere else where you didn't want to be, but you didn't know how to get out. This is, it's like a trap, to be blunt. Because what happens as well, in addition to what I said earlier, is oftentimes when you get into a relationship, you and your partner are on best behavior. You don't, show, you don't show your true colors, your true beingness at the beginning because you're afraid they might not like you. And they're afraid they might not, you might not like them. Because if you found out they were an abuser, you'd run for the hills, hopefully, before it got too emotionally enmeshed. But as time goes, goes by, you get emotionally in there. And you're connected. And it's almost like an addiction or um, a commitment energetically even though you had. And so you're in this relationship now and you can't get out. And meanwhile, this other person is becoming, well, not necessarily abusive, but controlling or judgmental or a workaholic or other things that don't work and you don't know how to leave. It's painful, I know. I know some people have dropped off because this is not their topic or they're afraid to talk about it, I understand. Some of the work I talk about on Periscope is very light and entertaining and fun. Some of it's like this, it's a bit deeper and provocative because truth for me is the more I can help you own your power 
own your amazing skills and love and heart and heal your heart, the healthier your choices are going to be. And then I'm successful in supporting you and get what you want. That's my work. So I'm giving stuff away here. Of course, with my clients, it's more direct and it's more directional. But if this can help you, I'm happy. If it helps one person, I'm grateful. So those of you who are still here, thanks for watching. And please, again, share it with your followers and friends. And please share the replay as well, because somebody out there may not know about this and will change their life. So thank you. So giving you some ways of getting into that, how to get out of it. The obvious thing, which I said kind of at the beginning or earlier on, is that if you are clear about what you want at the beginning, this probably won't happen. So if you have a clear picture, vision, list of emotional experiences, desires, intentions, um, journaling, whatever that is for you, defining what you want in a relationship that is as complete as you can make it, because it's going to keep evolving. You're talking about your life partner, ideally then I, that ideal intention will carry you into a relationship that will have less and less chance of going off the rails, as it were, into that contortionary experience. However, for many people, the list is not quite complete. It's one thing they forgot, one thing they didn't think about, or, to be honest, it could be a suppressed pattern. Glad you agree on that one. And this is because, I mean, I've, I've observed this for many years, so I see it as a general trait. My own research bears, bears this out. So... If you have clarity in what you want, really own it on all the levels. And what I recommend my clients do is you get clear about what you want in terms of physical attraction, emotional attraction, mental attraction, energetic, and all the different levels. So that what you're doing is creating a, a multi-dimensional, just three-dimensional, a multi-dimensional picture of the relationship you want to create. How you spend time together, how you feel in each other's arms, how you talk to each other, how you feel each other, how you see each other. All those pieces, it's a big list, but again, as I mentioned in my scope yesterday, there's three areas we put our primary focus into, money, health, and relationships. So why not put a lot of energy into relationships? Yes, vibrate the intention and more. And, I, and, I, and that's what I meant about the list. There's so many more pieces than just the vibration, which is key piece. Absolutely, I agree with you. That's, that's law of attraction stuff. But at the same time, get some um, human physical pieces in the puzzle laid out by drawing a list of what you want, drawing a picture, creating a picture, running a list of what you want because that helps you get the energetic feeling and some data points that your mind can process which is good to have. That's first. Secondly, be aware. What happens for a lot of my clients and people I've seen is that they get into a relationship and they start to go unconscious on certain things because now in the relationship they can relax. And the dance with that is when you can relax and you become unconscious in a relationship you miss subtle signs that otherwise you would see. So back to the beginning, and I said about how as time progresses, like boiling the water with the lobster or the, or the crab in it, they don't know it's getting hot until it's too late. Well, love is the highest vibration in the year, isn't it? In fact, I talk about that. I did a Facebook post about this because of a friend of mine was talking about peace and who got killed in Egypt. It's a whole other track, by the way. And I said that love is the answer because love is powerful. And some people are not able to reciprocate or share in the love and it's not going to be helpful to you if they can't give it back to you or if they're not willing to adjust their behavior to make you happy. Or I should say support your happiness because nothing can make you happy. So, yeah. Um, so, as the relationship progresses, there are subtle signs as I mentioned at the beginning. And if you... Hi, Peggy. Now, Peggy is somebody who's very important because she's, she actually is a therapist and knows this stuff inside out. So what I'm talking about leans into that, but I'm not a therapist, and I'm not a coach either. I'm, I'm kind of a bridge between the two. So what I'm sharing here will fit what she speaks about, but she goes much deeper in the therapeutic context because she's trained in that. So Peggy Oliveira, Oliveira Olivia, Olivia, I'll, I'll pronounce it right one of these days. You follow her too. Hi, good to have you here. So just to recap briefly so you can catch up where we were. I'm talking about contortionary relationships being that we often have a vision of what we want in relationship, jump into what we think is the right one, and as time goes by, things shift, and we end up adjusting ourselves outside of who we are to fit the relationship that our partner has sucked us into. And when I talked about ours, if you have a clear vision, it helps you start the right place, but if we get into a relationship like the lobster or the crab in water that gets boiled as they're in there, we may not catch the subtle signs that we're being pulled off track. So. One of the pieces I mentioned was have a clear picture at the front so you get so descriptive and so clear about what you want, you eliminate pretty much any chance of that being the direction you go in. 
So you stay true to yourself, true to your partner, and you have a healthy relationship, which is my prayer for all my clients. As time goes by, as I said, it's tempting to go unconscious, to be comfortable and relaxed, and not realize that your partner is driving the car off the road, energetically speaking. So one of your um, best systems, so many of us do not have a conscious strategy. True. That's when my work helps them. My book, my coaching, my programs, all that stuff is about making you conscious to choose. Because relationship, as I said, is one of the top three things in life, money, health, and relationships. Yet we think, well, we just go on to Match.com or on to Plenty of Fish or even Tinder and find our life partner. Now, if you step back and you feel like an, a, someone from Mars going, how do humans mate? <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Thank you. I appreciate HL. HL tactic, interesting uh, name. Thank you. I'm glad I could help. But if you imagine you came from Mars looking at humans, how they choose to date, and they say, well, they go to get this device they put in their hands, they tap something, and they meet someone with a picture, and they love them forever. What? How insane is that? So, again, as I said before, have a clear vision, not just a picture, but a full vision. It does. Yes, love does have a different vision, meaning for people. But I'm talking about healthy relationships for choices. Realizing not being true to myself and you are making me take a hard look at me. If that works for you and that helps you, I'm glad I can help you. Um, I have a lot more stuff in my skill set besides the scopes that can help you with that if you want to go deeper. So, um, yes. All right, so it's good to have you folks here. Let me, let me get back on track so I can get the scope complete. Yeah, I've got 10 minutes because I'm actually on another scope. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a four scope day for me today. This is my second and I've got two more coming. So let me recap quickly and get back on track. So vision about what you want helps a lot before you walk in. As the relationship progresses, as the time goes by, it's tempting to just go along for the ride, which I've done before. I mean, I'm speaking from my own experience. I did this more than a few times in my past. So I know for my clients how it feels. It's not like a theory that I hope them with. I've been there, done that, paid the price, and didn't get the T-shirt. But the, the choice is to stay aware. The option is to love your partner fully, immersively trust them. At the same time, stay true to yourself first. I talk about this in most of my scopes and in my book as well. It always starts from, thank you, I appreciate that. It always starts from loving yourself first. So the temptation to follow your partner wherever they go, however unhealthy it might be, is tempting if you're not loving yourself first because the thing is, and this is the key, when you love yourself first, and I use the analogy of the airplanes when you get the information about safety to use the oxygen mask on yourself first before your child, same in a relationship, meaning when you love yourself first so you can then love your partner, when you take care of yourself first so you then can take care of your partner, when you are true to yourself first, so you then be true to your partner, you get my theme here. Then if they start to wander off the, the track of where you want the relationship to go, they start to have you be things you're not meant to be, you'll know it right away. You'll sense it, you'll feel it, and you get to make a choice. Now there are a few choices you can make. I'm not saying you just go, okay, I'm done. Your partner may have just got forgetful. It may not be malevolent or um, true to their nature, but they got lazy too, perhaps. Perhaps you were just like relaxing along for the ride and your partner fell asleep at the wheel. It's like, you go, honey, wake up, energetically speaking. So that way they come back into alignment and you come back into alignment together. Because again, these are options. I'm talking about a whole range of relationship possibilities, not saying this is the way it always is and the way it's going to be. There's a range. Now, if it becomes something where they have an innate pattern, and I said I've had this experience with one of my clients where they were abused, because the partner most likely in this case it was the case, came from an abusive background. They had it wired in themselves that when they were abused, it showed their parents loved them. As bizarre as that wiring is, but for people in abuse environments, that's not unusual. That they associate love with pain or with hurt. Self-discovery that leads to self-love in my case. That's true for a lot of me as well and for a lot of us. So you're right on track, that's awesome. Um, so in the extreme case or an extreme case is of pain and abuse and suffering that we think is normal because we get slowly adjusted into it. Now for some of us, I didn't have this thankfully, we come from an abusive background. So maybe when we get into a relationship, being abused is what we actually unconsciously are seeking to know that we are loved. It's a love language, not one of the five from, from, from Gary Chapman, but it's a love language we understand because we were raised with that. If that's not working for you and you want help with that, I, I'm passionate about helping my clients learn to love from their hearts, love themselves, to honor themselves, and get to break the cycle. 
because because abuse and this is something I know some of my coaching friends and particularly my therapist friends talk about too abuse is hereditary it's a pattern handed down by generations as a signature love um, posture that they carry through so this contortionary thing covers a lot of turf and I'm trying to cover a lot in a short space of time these are just plant seeds to give you input ideas and ideally some choices that you can make for yourself so you love yourself more and sometimes the choice as I said um, yesterday in the scope being lonely versus being alone choosing to be alone is a very healthy and challenging choice to make in the society but it's the most potent way to love yourself first again as I mentioned to love yourself first fully so that when you choose a relationship that doesn't change not codependent but independent moving into interdependence that was the scope I did yesterday so watch the archive for that um, that was a good that was a good conversation and a good teaching in fact the last this, these three days have been really juicy for me and the love scopes they just seem to come up so um, that is what but that is why it's important to hear what your partner believes what love is yes absolutely Georgie and it's also important because this has happened I know for myself is don't renegotiate your own values because you think theirs are good enough hard to do sometimes when the person I was talking to a friend of mine last night going through this he knows this woman is his partner but she's choosing somebody else and it hurts him like hell values yes and choices because you also need to be clear look at your list of what you want and what your ideal relationship is and some of the things that you see on the list might go that's not true anymore it does come down to values and your values sometimes evolve well, actually no, they do evolve sometimes they change more quickly than you expect one of my values you know I, I used to be very open to what my what my partner was about um, dietarily speaking didn't I didn't care what their diet was having experiences in the past my values have changed about that because of my diet and my partner's diet so yes values are important but know that they can change and evolve all right I need to wrap up shortly because I'm going to be ready because I'm in another scope at one o'clock Pacific time it's now five two um, actually no I don't <laughs> no it's different scopes where I'm thinking of other things okay I'm going to go in a minute to do another scope so I'm just going to sign off now please take care of yourselves I realize I've got to jump off because I go on the other one um, thanks for watching the scope please share it with your, the replay with your friends you can tap on the screen for hearts on the replay you can share it with everybody this one's a potent one there's more to come I'm doing another scope in a minute which I'll be on which is share a -thon, and I'll be also doing a Perry Tips one later in the day okay I've got to go I realize I'm running late thanks for watching this one thanks for your input and your questions if you want to reach out to me if you go to my profile there's a link for a consult also a donation button because I take donations too thanks for watching I appreciate you being here enjoy yourselves I'll be back on soon bye